I created the ultimate Stardew Valley iceberg with over 100 entries, and I'm going to tell you about each and every single one in this video today. Stay tuned. One sec. I hate to cut in, but this is important. So out of the 5 million views total on my channel, only 10% have come from people who were subscribed, meaning 90% of people who watch my stuff are not subscribed. But wait, don't skip. I'll make you a deal. If you're watching this and you aren't subscribed right now, subscribe right now and I will reply to every single comment this video gets in the first 24 hours. So subscribe, then go drop a question or a video idea. So let's have some nice chats. Hope to see you guys down there. Layer 1. Stardew Valley Expanded. Stardew Valley Expanded is one of the largest Stardew Valley mods. It adds a ton of new content, characters, and more. It currently has some of the most downloads on Nexus mod, with 2.8 million total. Board Game. On February 23rd, 2021, Concerned Ape announced the Stardew Valley Board Game, a physical version of the hit game. It sold out basically instantly, however, a restock was announced on November 3rd, 2021. Unfortunately, I've never played it and it does not ship to Canada, where I live. Concerned Ape. Concerned Ape is the developer of Stardew Valley. He has spent almost 10 years of his life on Stardew Valley. Marnie and Lewis. Marnie and Lewis are basically confirmed at this point to be in a secret relationship. It's confirmed in numerous cutscenes, small events, and more. Three pillars in the desert. In the desert that you unlock when you complete the vault, it has three pillars. If you stand in the middle of them with a prismatic shard, you will receive a galaxy sword. A decently strong weapon. Dangerously Funny. Dangerously Funny is the largest Stardew Valley content creator of all time, and he is beloved in the community, with hundreds of thousands of people, okay, maybe not hundreds of thousands, a lot of people still bothering him every day, asking him to make more videos on Stardew. I personally have taken big inspiration from him and respect him a ton, and think his new stuff is equally as entertaining as his Stardew stuff, if not more. Stardew Valley Wiki the Stardew Valley Wiki is basically the best source for, mostly, correct information about Stardew Valley and anything in it. Abigail is the wizard's daughter. This is probably one of the best known theories besides Marnie and Lewis. Basically, the theory says that Caroline, when she snuck into the woods for walks when she and Pierre first moved into the valley, she had an affair with the wizard that resulted in Abigail. Multiple things point to this, like Abigail saying that she never has to dye her hair, and it always stays purple, same as the wizard, and that wizard saying that he thinks he has a child in the town. Trimmed Lucky Purple Shorts This item is an item that is similar to the purple shorts that you can get for doing a quest involving Marnie and Lewis. If you play Staircase in your pants slot, it turns into Trimmed Lucky Purple Shorts. Be careful though, it takes all of your staircases, not just one. Stone Owl The Stone Owl is a semi-rare event that can happen overnight when sleeping. It used to be much more rare before the 1.5 update, but the odds were raised a ton in said update. Crop Fairy the Crop Fairy is another event that can happen overnight. It chooses a random crop and grows all crops in a 5x5 around it. It's not super useful and normally just gets my crops out of tune annoyingly. Shane's Depression Shane's Depression is heavily implied in multiple cutscenes, and with his drinking problem and general kind of rude attitude towards the player sometimes. Garbage Hat The Garbage Hat is an event that can happen after the player has opened a certain amount of garbage cans. The can will explode and give you a cool looking hat. It's pretty rare, so if you get one, count yourself lucky. I've personally never seen one myself. Santa Claus Santa Claus is an event that can happen on the 25th of December. You can see him flying in the back of the shipping screen after you go to sleep. The Summit The Summit is an area that was unused and actually cut content until the 1.5 update that added 100% completion. It's basically just a cool place that gives you something cool and fun once you reach 100% of the game. Not counting Factor's Challenge, thank god. I'm not going to show what happens at said event because some people don't want it spoiled. If you really want, just google the event and you can find a full video of it. Alien Capsule The Alien Capsule is yet another event that can happen overnight. Basically, a spooky little capsule will appear in your farm. A few days later, it will actually shatter and you will get a cutscene showing a little shadow creature, not Krobus, running by the bus stop. Animals can be killed. This refers to the interaction that can happen when you actually lock an animal outside. Basically, if you open the barn door, then close it before an animal can get back in at night, it has a chance to be eaten by a wolf overnight. Galaxy Slingshot The Galaxy Slingshot is an item that was removed from the game. It was going to be a tier of the Slingshot above the second tier of the Slingshot, the stronger Slingshot, but was removed from the game for unknown reasons. Layer 2 Title Screen Easter Eggs The title screen has a few Easter eggs that you can see. If you click the Concerned Ape profile picture in the loading screen, he will lose his drip and get squashed. If you click the E, a bunch of aliens will wave at you. If you click the bottom right of the W, butterflies will appear. If you take the bottom left screw and put it in the R, a cool little thingy will happen. If you click the leaves, some thingies will fly out. 
Rare Crows. Rare Crows are special scarecrows that can be found in various places across the map, from the ice fishing festival to the casino. A fact that some people might not know is that when you collect all eight of them, you unlock a recipe for an ultimate scarecrow that covers a massive area and protects them all from crows. Dungeons. Dungeons were an old feature that got removed. They were planned to replace the mine system, but Concerned Ape decided to switch them out for the mine system we have today. Queen of Sauce. The Queen of Sauce theory is that it's actually run by Gus, since he seems like the only person who knows how to cook very well. Junimo Plush. The Junimo Plush is a cool little decoration that you can get by visiting this bush at 12am and clicking on it at exactly 12am. It's pretty cool. I normally just grab one and put it in a chest and forget about it, but if you're into decorating more than me, it's a cool decoration to have. Concerned Ape's favorite thing. If you put Concerned Ape as your favorite thing, you can actually get a cool message when you obtain a star drop where he thanks you. Zuzu City. Zuzu City is a mod that is mentioned in various parts of the game and is where your character originally comes from. You only go to it after you come to Stardew Valley for Sam's concert. However, many players, including myself, wish we could see it themselves. Some devs are actually coding a mod for it which is currently in beta, so that's pretty cool. Check out the Downtown Zuzu mod if you're interested. Locked Boxes Locked Boxes are an easter egg around the map, but when you put something in, you get a cool looking statue. You can see all three of the statues on screen now. They also have cool, weird-ish names that I'm not going to say out because I'm going to mispronounce them. Luau Purple Shorts At an event in the game, you get to put an ingredient into the soup at said event. You were obviously meant to put something like a high-quality crop to raise the friendship with the villagers of the town. But if you instead put in the purple shorts that you can obtain from a quest from Mayor Lewis, you will get a funny response from the town folk when they eventually try it. Meteorite The meteorite is an event that causes a purple meteor to fall on your farm requires a tier 3 gold pickaxe to break it, and gives you stone, geodes, and a small amount of iridium ore, the strongest ore in the game. CA's new project. At the time when the iceberg was created, the game was actually not announced yet, but now we know what it is. The game is called Haunted Chocolatier and is kind of a shop tycoon adventurous game that is still in early development. We don't know a ton about it, but all I know is I'm going to be playing it a lot when it comes out. Iridium Crobus Iridium Crobus is a cool decoration that can be obtained by hitting level 15 fishing using food and enchantments and casting off right here. The secret stash is an easter egg in the game that can be seen in a hard event with Pierre. The player is in Pierre's room and walks in to find a secret stash of something. We are never actually told what it is specifically, but me and other players suspect it's either drugs or adult magazines. Secret Note 11 Secret Note 11 is a note that can be found doing various things in the game. It shows a picture of Marnie and Young Jazz. Marnie looks a lot different and honestly looks kind of fresh. Always Bet Green Always Bet Green is actually an entry and a handy tip all in one. Basically, in the Spin at the Wheels Fair minigame, you want to always bet on green because it has a 75% chance compared to the 25% chance that orange has. She will win much more often. One might even say three times as often. Haley Super Cucumber. Haley Super Cucumber refers to a quest that the player can receive on the quest board in the town, next to Pierre's general shop. The quest is actually quite sus, to say the least, and uh, I think this image will speak better than what I could say personally. Kent's PTSD. Kent's PTSD is the theory that Kent has PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder, from his time fighting in the war and getting trapped in a prison camp. It is unfortunately confirmed in a cutscene where Kent's PTSD is triggered by his wife popping popcorn. Super sad, but it shows that Stardew Valley has the capacity for deeper and kind of more, I guess, advanced storytelling. Lifesaver The Lifesaver is an item that you can obtain from fishing in the back room of Willie's shop, where you travel to Ginger Island eventually. Potential Bachelors this refers to the poll that Concerned Ape conducted in April 2016, and which new marriage candidate he should add next. The options were Shane, Linus, Clint, and the Wizard. As we all know, Shane won and he has been loved or hated since then. Ironically, I would want literally any other character to be chosen, as I think they are all much more interesting. Seeing Clint's shyness maybe taken down and him finding true love with the player would be satisfying in my opinion. You could also see Linus maybe move in with the player or get a second house for the player where them and Linus could live would be so cool. And the wizard simply for all the cool stuff he could do with cutscenes and magic and stuff. Green Sea Monster The Green Sea Monster is a super rare event that can happen on the beach where a cute little sea monster pokes his head out of the water and swims around. I've actually never seen this event so count yourself lucky if you've seen it yourself. Linus's past. There are a ton of theories about Linus's past, but we are going to cover a few of them later on, so I won't go super in depth here. Some of them are Linus founded Joja, Linus is God, etc. Layer 3 Skeleton in Joja. 
In the opening scene of Stardew Valley, you know, the cutscene you watch once and now skip every single time you start a new farm, well, you can actually see that one of your co-workers has turned into a skeleton for working too long. That's gonna be me working on this video. Item ID Cheat The item ID cheat is a cheat that basically lets you put a series of numbers with brackets on either side, no, I don't care that they technically aren't called brackets, grow up, and when an NPC says your name, you will receive the item that the item code corresponds with, and since most items in the game have a code to go along with it. Lonely Stone The Lonely Stone is a little rock on the map that when clicked on makes a funny noise. Poor guy. Old Master Cannoli Old Master Cannoli is the statue in the secret woods, and if you bring him a sweet gem berry, he will give you a star drop. 18 Eggs at the egg hunt in spring, the maximum amount of eggs you can collect in the time is 18. It is insanely hard to pull off. Underscore 76 originally designed a TAS of it. A TAS lets you enter the exact inputs on each in-game frame, so basically the perfect run. No one could pull off the run for ages because it was so insanely precise. To put it in some perspective, you had two frames where you could not do the exact right inputs. But Sendeko finally managed to pull it off, and he is going down in Sturdy Valley history as so far the only person to have ever done it. Out of Bounds Glitch You can glitch out of bounds in a few areas using a weapon that you can swing. If you swing enough, you can push yourself out of bounds and run around in the abyss. Rain Noises While it's raining in Sturdy Valley, you can hear some spooky sounds play in the background that spook out a lot of player. Wilted Bouquet The Wilted Bouquet is a semi-forgotten item that can be obtained by smelting a bouquet in a furnace. As expected, it does the exact opposite of a normal bouquet, reducing the recipient's friendship by a ton and ending the relationship if they are dating. Jukebox Ring The Jukebox Ring is an unobtainable and non-functional item that was basically just going to be a normal jukebox, but you could carry it around anywhere. Would have been super cool, but even if you cheat in the item, it does nothing. I really wish we could just vibe to Molten Jelly anywhere. Bridge Crosser the character Krobus in the game, a little sewer dwelling fellow, well his name actually means bridge crosser in his language, which is ironic considering some of his cutscenes. CA command messages. If you do slash concern date, you'll get a neat little easter egg that I won't reveal here. You gotta do it yourself. Sprout Valley. Sprout Valley was the original name for Stardew Valley when it was first being developed. A few images of the original logo still exist, like this one. Character specific weapons. Character specific weapons refer to that many of the characters in the game had specific weapons that were named after them. Sadly, all of these items were removed for whatever reason. I think that spouses being able to fight or use weapons has huge potential. Like maybe they could have come to the mines and fight with you and save you if you get low HP or just help you mine and fight. Ghost Town The Ghost Town is a mod that was created for Stardew Valley that turns everyone in the town into ghosts. It also has stories for how all of them died and it's pretty eerie and kinda creepy. Especially when some of the characters just walk around pretending everything's normal when they are clearly dead. Dove Children Haunting This happens when you release kids and they turn into doves. I'll tell you what the haunting part is on another layer, but it involves a horror movie of sorts. Linus founded Jojo What if Linus and Morris were actually business partners? There's a big theory in the Stardew Valley community that Linus and Jojo Mark work together. But Linus had a realization and decided he didn't like the corporation's blue collar lifestyle anymore. Maybe this is why he chose to be homeless? Grandpa hosts living off the land. On winter 25th, year 2, you get a message stating that this is the narrator's last time hosting living off the land, and that the next two episodes will be reruns. What if this is the grandpa helping the player from beyond the grave the entire time, giving them farming tips as they go? Is living off the land just one big rerun? Who knows? M. Jasper Identity. There's a couple theories about this one, one being that Marlin from the adventuring group is the writer and that he just wrote all these lost books when he was younger. It makes sense considering the books in mind are about exploring. Another theory is that it's the mysterious Mona in the graveyard, but there's less evidence surrounding this one. Cursed Prairie King Cabinet The Cursed Prairie King Cabinet refers to an item that is currently unobtainable in the game for whatever reason. I assume it would have been some more difficult version of Prairie King, but for whatever reason it was not added. Shane is Sebastian's father. In the Stardew Valley community, it is sort of canon that Shane and Robin were married at some point. Sebastian and Shane look similar, so maybe Sebastian is his and Robin's son? Morris is Sebastian's father. This is a bit of a stretch, but because Sebastian and Morris are both outcasted from Telekin Town, 
and they both have dark hair, um, maybe they could be, uh, never mind. Mona is Alex's mother. This one is also a bit of a stretch, as it's pretty canon that Clara is Alex's mother. However, what if this is a lie and Mona is Alex's mom? I feel like it could be anyone's mom without evidence to back this claim up. Hat Mouse Home used to be Linus's. In the bottom left corner of the map near the wizard's tower, you can find a little house of the Hat Mouse. Basically, when you reach certain milestones, he sells you new hats. The theory is that this was Linus's old house and when he decided to move to his tent, either gave it to the mouse or the mouse just moved in. Emily is actually the wizard's daughter. It actually makes a good amount of sense that Emily would be the wizard's daughter, since she seems to be a bit more magically inclined, or at least pretends to be more effective than Abigail at pretending. She has her magic rocks and everything like that, so it kind of makes sense. Layer 4 Bad Ending In the bad ending, you could actually lose Stardew Valley. You go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a rival in the old ending. In the original storyline, you were constantly competing with a rival, which can actually be found in the game's code still. There was a final event, the 16th Centennial Stardew Valley Celebration, where it's speculated that the rival would show up. Not too much is known about this though, as CA hasn't said anything on this. Super Zoo Story Around May last year, a new controversy began turning heads in the Stardew Valley community. A new game called Super Zoo Story was in the works, but it was remarkably similar to Stardew Valley in terms of its visuals. Concerned Ape himself said they should take the time to develop their own style. The creators of Stardew Valley responded in a page-long letter on Twitter, apologizing and agreeing with the critics in CA. They noted, Sometimes, as passionate developers, we get tunnel vision and it becomes harder to judge ourselves objectively. Ferngill Republic the Ferngill Republic is where Stardew Valley is located. In Stardew, Ferngill is currently at a lengthy war with the Garado Empire. Ferngill is named in the Living Off the Land sequence during the 25th of Fall, Year 2, stating it's just a couple of days until communities around the Ferngill Republic celebrate Spirit's Eve, indicating that Ferngill is the only community to celebrate Spirit's Eve. Cleaner Heights Stardew Valley is definitely not in the horror game genre, but if you do want a horror game farming mashup, Gleaner Heights might be up your alley. Inspired by Harvest Moon and Stardew Valley, Gleaner Heights is a creepy or haunted version of these two games. Who knew planting parsnips could be so terrifying? Gate Bomb Warp You used to be able to place a gate in a specific location in the mountain mines, blow it up, and a ladder would spawn. Taking this ladder would teleport you to the Skull Caverns. Very strange. I assume the mines were just somehow connected since they're both mines. Not gonna pretend how coding works, I'm just, I mean, this is not an insane assumption. Garado Empire War The Garado Empire is currently at war with the Ferngill Republic, and we aren't really sure why. We do know, based off Sam saying, Dad was telling me about our national enemy, the Garado Empire. They sound like a ruthless bunch. And his dad, Kent, being in the war against the Garado. When you give Kent an item he hates, he shudders because it was given to him in the prison camp. Doesn't sound like the Garado were a forgiving bunch, but the Garado definitely have some valuable items, otherwise the traveling merchant probably wouldn't bother smuggling them out of the empire. Josh House In the code, Alex's home is referred to instead by Josh's house, so we can speculate Alex was supposed to be called Josh. It's unclear why his name was ever changed, but I think I prefer Alex. The Nine Races in Stardew Valley, the player mainly interacts with humans, but we can't forget about the other races. There's nine races in total. Humans, Elves, Junimos, Dwarves, Shadow People, Goblins, Merpeople, Fairies, and Tundra Dwellers. We frequently run into Dwarves, usually in the mines in the Volcano Dungeon. We get to meet Krobus, the shadow person in the sewers, and get an awe-inspiring performance from a mermaid during the Night Festival. We don't see much about goblins aside from the place in the witch's swamp, and tundra dwellers aside from books and barks from NPCs. Jazz is the wizard's daughter. This one can make a little sense, but there are other theories in my opinion. Jazz could possibly be the wizard's daughter due to her hair color and maybe due to her parents being deceased, but we'll look more at this one in depth later. Alien Theory this is just a brief mention that aliens are prevalent and exist within the Stardew Valley world, such as through the strange capsule that can appear on your farm, the aliens that pop out when you spam click the E on the Stardew Valley title screen, and the UFO noises. Vincent is Yoba. Looking at this theory, this feels like a massive stretch. The reason this is a theory because Yoba backwards is a boy. The only boy in Stardew Valley is Vincent. But, um... That's stupid, I'm sorry. Linus is Yoba. 
This theory is much more sound, albeit still kind of a stretch. This theory is popular because of what Linus, name meaning flaxen haired, wears, gold colored cloth, and how he's rather enigmatic and enlightened. Even when given the opportunity to live in a house, he declines. I'd also like to note his placement in the mountains, meaning he can see and look over everything, which, you know, he's like in heaven, guys, that's insane. The bottom of Skull Caverns. So, Skull Caverns is meant to be infinite, but it turns out there's a bottom. Except it ends on level 2,147,483,647. So, you are not reaching that in normal gameplay. But it's kind of interesting, I guess. If you don't know why that number kind of comes up a lot in games, it's because it's the 32 bit integer limit, and most machines use 32 bit integer. I don't know why, it's just fun facts. Man on the Moon. This is just an interesting easter egg. If you click on the moon in the selling screen, when it tallies up how much you made that day, you get a rather angry face on the moon. It's actually a reference to the first ever film, which is pretty cool. Elemental Wars. A cool tidbit of lore within Stardew Valley, the dwarves once invading the Shadow People's home, forcing the Shadow People to live elsewhere, you can get an interesting cutscene with Krobus and the Mind Dwarf about their long lasting spite for each other and just for their races. Full Ninth. On Full Ninth, once a year, you can follow Lewis and see Lewis and Marnie in bed together. Very spicy. The town is also like very, very abandoned that day, I guess I could say. Like basically no one's out, which is kind of weird. Castle Village. In Stardew Valley Expanded, a mod, there is a mysterious entrance that can be visited by going through the Crimson Badlands. However, you can actually not enter this place as there's a magic barrier. It's also mentioned in a few other lore descriptions on items. Lewis and Marnie Bush Scene In Stardew Valley, when you're exploring a world around you, there's a small chance a secret note will drop. More specifically, Note 21 shows a bush, a moon, and a clock showing 1240. If you go to said bush, Marnie and Lewis will pop out. Traveling Merchant is a Garado spot. This is a possible theory based on her dialogue stating that she smuggles goods out of the Garado Empire. Mayor Lewis is ruining the town. This is a pretty reasonable theory based on the fact that the kids have not broken and dilapidated textbooks, the community center is in ruins, public transport is not working, and grandpa's farm being in complete and utter shambles, but somehow he can afford a solid gold statue of himself. However, we also have to note there are several festivals and events a year, so maybe this isn't all true. Either way, his priorities are definitely not in order. Missing Parents In Stardew Valley, there seems to be a theme of missing parents. Shannon and Jazz don't have their parents, and Haley and Emily's parents traveled abroad, but don't ever come back in the time we're in Stardew Valley. Night Vale's shared universe. There's an interesting theory that Welcome to Night Vale and Stardew Valley actually share the same universe. Tax fraud. Going back to what we said earlier, we know Lewis wants to sell the community center to Jojo Corp. I feel like he doesn't want to repair it because he is greedy and using it on his own projects. And we also know he probably doesn't tax the player. Maybe he's just skimming the profits off as an unofficial kind of Mayor Lewis tax if you know what I'm saying. Fall 26th Cursed. When you decide to send your children to the Great Perch in the Sky by turning them into doves using a prismatic shard in the Witch's Swamp, nothing happens, well, besides your children disappearing. Except, when you look on the TV on Fall 26th, an eerie message pops out and a doll will jump out of the screen and attack you. Gunther is a ghost. This is a popular theory because Gunther, unlike most NPCs in the valley, the player does not have the option to interact with him, give him gifts, or build his friendship level. He also possesses a key over a hundred years old, and it is unclear how he knows its age. Therefore, it is possible he may be a ghost that is at least a hundred years old. You died going to Stardew Valley. I think this is a pretty neat theory, so you take the bus to Stardew Valley initially, but Maybe the bus is totaled after you get there. Maybe the player got into a crash that killed him. That's why you initially have to fix the bus, even though you got there on said bus. Interesting theory makes a lot of sense. Farmer is the same, if not as bad as Joja. This one just makes sense, to be honest. Some of the main goals for the farmer can be basically set as money goals. Going perfection for grandpa, you can get a whopping seven points if he makes it a million gold and it seems like grandpa has some motives. Either way, the farmer destroys the forest around them to plant crops and make a bunch of gold. You also completely overfish, like getting so many fish out of the water, not sustainable for wildlife, 
overplant the crops, meaning that like it's gonna be crippled and the soil won't be as effective in the long run, which is not good. Grandpa and Evelyn. In the screen where you see Grandpa on his bed in the initial cutscene, you can look at the mantle and notice a framed photo. It looks somewhat like Evelyn. Maybe this is why George is so mad at us all of the time? Did Grandpa and Evelyn have a relationship? All dwarves killed in the war. The fierce elemental war mentioned earlier. Maybe almost all the dwarves were wiped out by the shadow people, which was explained why they choose to live deep underground or in dangerous places like the volcano dungeon. Old Mariner is Willie's father. This makes sense to me as he is right next to the beach where Willie is and they are both sailors. If you don't know who the Old Mariner is, basically he's the guy who will sell you the marriage pendant so you can marry Haley and immediately divorce her to ruin her life. Ex Stardew Valley. <laughs> this adds some adult uh, entertainment to <laughs> Stardew Valley. Uh, Concerned Ape has spoken about his dislikes and uncomfortable feeling for these mods, stating he has a personal attachment to the characters he made, but he decided against to try to stop modders from making them. Which I respect to an extent, but also modders, you guys are terrible while you're making these, what the hell is wrong with you? Layer 5. Winter 28, Year Zero. This is technically the day before you come to Stardew Valley, or it's assumed you arrive on the night of Winter 28, Year Zero, then wake up on Spring 1, Year 1. Okay, that makes sense. Counterpoints. Why is it not winter out? When you arrive in Stardew Valley, it's spring, so doesn't that mean you arrive on Spring 1st? Okay, fair enough. But then wouldn't you start on Spring 2nd? No, you start on Spring 1st. So it just makes no sense, I, I don't know. Interesting theory, nice nitpick, not really a big deal, obviously. Pizza Puff Cereal. This is what Shane feeds the kids when you marry him and have kids with him. There is also some uncomfortable dialogue that I read out in my last iceberg, I'm not reading it again, I don't want that on the internet. Xbox Live Arcade. So essentially, the original plan for Stardew Valley, as thought of by Concerned Ape, was for him to develop it for a few months and then just release it on the Xbox Live Indie Arcade. At the time, Xbox Live Indie Arcade was an Xbox like indie game platform created by Microsoft. Some other games were gonna go on it initially like Cuphead, etc. And he was just gonna place it on there and be like a quick couple month project. But obviously it spiraled out of control. I'm kinda glad it spiraled out of control into what we know today as just Stardew Valley. And it originally launched on PC instead of Xbox, ironically. <laughs> Abigail's animal abuse. This refers to how she treats her guinea pig, and this has actually caused a massive divide in the community. David Jr., her guinea pig, is alone in an aquarium-style cage with a wheel. Three huge problems to her small rodent lovers out there. It is incredibly cruel to leave a guinea pig alone, so much that some countries even ban owning a singular guinea pig. Secondly, you cannot let them run around in a wheel, as this is actually harmful to their spine. Finally, an aquarium does not provide enough space and breathing room for a guinea pig. Eric responded with, I haven't decided what to do yet. I certainly don't want my game to cause any harm to guinea pigs, but I'm also not sure if the mistake would actually result in that. I'll have to think about this more. I personally think there's honestly not really a huge need to remove it from the game because I probably agree with Eric. I don't really think anyone's gonna be like, oh hey, my favorite video game character, Abigail from Stardew Valley, has a guinea pig. I'm going to go out and buy a singular guinea pig and place it in a cage with a wheel. I just realistically don't think that's happening. I don't think it's a huge deal if he leaves it in. Maybe that's a hot take. Maybe guinea pig lovers out there dislike it and commenting right now, but I think it's just up to how how important you think or how much influence Stardew Valley has on the real world. Original opening. The original opening actually has you on the bus on your way to Stardew Valley. Concerned Ape says that this was meant to be a chance for the player to get used to the controls. It even had a villain named Dobson. CA had decided to not want a strong villain, but instead an annoying side villain, like Morris. Here's some gameplay on the screen of what the demo looked like. Dragon Remains As noted by the large dragon skeleton in the Coleco Desert, and the number of dragon teeth you find at the Volcano Dungeon, we can easily speculate that dragons were a massive part of the world before us, but I guess we'll never know what truly happened with them. Stardew Valley is a simulation by Mr. Key. This is a theory I actually find pretty interesting. Mr. Key has the ability to put beans inside coconuts, run an underground casino, track all the stats a player does, and more fun stuff I will not spoil. I feel like it's entirely possible for him to have done this, it's kinda sick honestly. Mysterious Winter Door On the bottom of the farm during winter, you'll see a weird door. 
as in one that would just go into a house, not something more cave-like. So far, there isn't really information on what it's behind it. Is it a Narnia reference? Possibly. Either way, neat little Easter egg. Yeah, it could be an Easter egg, could be a bug. We'll never know. Unless Concerned Ape leaves a comment explaining all these. That'd be cool. Hi, Concerned Ape. Happy late birthday. Sebastian's father is a shadow person. This is actually a really cool theory. So a few reasons for this is that Sebastian is a loner and prefers dark environments like his basement. His accents, hair, eyes, clothing are all dark. His hard events take place in progressively later times. The first being at any time around 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and the 10 hard event taking place around 8 p.m. to midnight. Almost like as he gets more accustomed to you, he lets you see who he really resembles. Kent is trying to kill you. Kent sometimes will send you bombs. Yes, actual bombs in the mail. Not very nice. Alex's mother committed suicide. Alex had to move in with his grandparents, George and Evelyn, characters in the game. Basically, the thought of raising Alex alone might have been too much for Alex's mom, since Alex's father left. On the nightstand in Alex's grandparents' bedroom, there's a letter from Clara, Alex's mom, saying that if she got in the letter, it meant she had passed on. She also might have been sick. Either way, it's definitely devastating to Alex and he still hasn't moved on past it, which is completely understandable. Wombus World Wombus World is a comic series created by Stardew Valley developer Concerned Ape. There was a website, wombusworld.com. It's currently down, but you can actually look at it using the Wayback Machine. So here's some cool screenshots from it. You ruined your spouse's life. When you divorce in Stardew Valley, back to their original residence, they will only talk to you negatively. Any kids you have stay at the farmhouse, and possibly, the darkest part, if the player and the NPC are expecting a kid and a divorce interrupts this event, the kid will not be developed. <laughs> I'll let you make your own conclusions. And even when a player is married, and before divorce, the NPC is ripped away from all their family and friends and stay on the farm most of the time alone. Kinda sad, honestly. Zombie Square. When you go to Wombus World and click on the gravestone, you can get an interesting mini-game. Either I, the partial writer, or Wallygug knew how to play this. Maybe you can figure it out, link below? 3DS port. Ever since the game has been out, players all over have been wondering why there isn't a 3DS port. In an email to Stardew Valley support, Eric says it is something he's interested in, but I really just don't think it'd be worth it at this point since it's already not on Nintendo Switch, basically every other platform, like mobile, so like, it's just kind of unneeded since I don't think 3DS market share is super big nowadays. <laughs> Sorry to any like 3DS fanboys out there. Parachute. If you go to Wombus World and click on the parachute icon, a cute minigame pops up. Unfortunately, it is not playable because Adobe Flash no longer works. Any developers out there, you should port this. That'd be awesome. I'll PayPal you like five bucks if you do it. You died in Joja. In fact, it could be that everyone in Stardew Valley is dead. When you open the letter from Grandpa, you notice a skeleton at the desk behind you. It could be the player at the desk. It would explain the magic, how no one ages, how you can talk to Grandpa at will, suggesting that Stardew Valley is paradise compared to Joja. Leah's Statue Conspiracy There's a conspiracy about the statue Leah gives you when you reach her six heart event, in that it only has something to do with the several locked boxes around Stardew Valley. Since the shape of her statue, certain parts of it are placed over where a lot of the special statues are found. Currently, we've only unlocked a few of these boxes, but maybe this statue will give us another key to the puzzle? Mr. Key is evil. I think Mr. Key could have expected the player to come this entire time, but needed Grandpa dead for them to come to Stardew Valley? So what if Mr. Key killed Grandpa? Key is omnipotent enough to expect the player's arrival to floor 100 of the Skull Caverns? How far is reaching is his third eye? Why does he keep track of the player's progress so heavily in Key's walnut room? Maybe he wants to pull some Black Widow stuff where he makes the player into this amazing cool hero and then like uses them for his own gain. Kinda cool, not really a big Marvel guy, but that would be awesome. <laughs> the Wizard's Wife The Wizard, his ex-wife, is a witch, and her presence leads to a pretty cool quest I will not spoil. But why would the wizard marry a witch? This is also kind of unclear. Overall, him and his ex had a pretty strange relationship. His ex seemed to really dislike the player, as she will sometimes curse a chicken. The wizard says she does this in anger, but we really don't hear a lot about cursed chickens from the townspeople, so maybe it's just to the player for some reason? Grandpa's Tragic Life 
Grandpa did not exactly have a nice retirement to say the least. He got trapped on his farm, died in Pelican Town, may have been married to Evelyn, so at some point she left him for George, or after she widowed, she married George. Either way, terrible way to go, especially if Mr. Key was up to it. Strange dolls are dead children. The strange doll is an artifact like many other that can be found all around the world. However, it looks eerily similar to an actual child. Witches created dolls as a revenge for the affair. There's a pretty crazy theory that the totem in the witch's hut were going to be used for revenge. She wanted to erase the wizard's mistress mind and then turn the product of that affair into a dove. The wiz had an affair with Jazz's mother and the witch killed her parents. Besides Abigail possibly being the wizard's daughter, there's a theory about who his mystery kid could be. Jad also has purple hair and both her parents are dead. Maybe the witch realized what was happening and realized that the villagers wouldn't accept her and out of fear killed the parents? I don't know. Or maybe she just wanted to like ruin a life, who knows. Maybe she's completely unhinged. Harvey, Gunther, Morris, Mr. Key, and Pierre are destroying the environment. This is definitely possible. Mr. Key changes entire fruits to get you beans and plants his fruit everywhere. He makes you mine the land constantly and more. Pierre seems to be more focused on his profits and openly talks about he wants to open more and more stores. Morris, this should be common sense by you now, I mean you made it to the last layer of the starting valley iceberg, come on. Gunther encourages the players to dig up the ground to find artifacts and Harvey only follows one trait the rest of these guys possess, glasses. Glasses are a trash item. Therefore, the only characters in Stardew Valley are these characters. So that means all the glasses in the trash, like all the, all the trash you find when you're fishing, is only from them. Or at least the glasses. So they're destroying the environment. Like, I don't know why they need to change glasses so often, but they are. And it's kind of crazy and they're destroying the environment. Genetically modified rabbits. Rabbits are the only animal that the player can raise that cannot reproduce which suggests the possibility of clones or genetically modified rabbits. A lot of work for a little bunny. Patch 1.3.32. This patch note has a weirdly ominous message saying it fixed a Geneva Convention violation. Essentially, there was a red cross in Stardew Valley, which is actually not allowed under the Geneva Convention, only the red cross organization can use it. So that's kind of interesting. And that is everything. I'll see you guys later. If you want to come chat with me, make sure you leave a comment and subscribe like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, and join my Discord, link in description. Also, make sure you check out this video on screen, I'm 95% sure you'll like it.